<laughs> Welcome back to your next episode of Decoding Couples. How was that? That was horrible. Should that be our new yeah, intro? Yeah, no, it should not be our new intro. All right. Well, welcome back. Today we're tackling a big topic. Um, yeah. There's a lot to talk about here. We're going to do our best to be concise, and then we'll probably have some follow-up episodes because today we're talking about mental health yeah. struggles in relationships. Um, today, we're, we're particularly going to focus on the partner who maybe is not experiencing um, the mental health concerns at that time um, and how to best take care of yourself, take care of your partner, what it might look like, what shifts you might see in your relationship. Yeah. So yeah. again, big topic. Um, we're going to do our best, but we're not going to be able to cover it all so um just keep that keep that in the back of your mind as we go through bam so if i'm the partner that maybe is not struggling what is it going to look like if i notice that my partner is struggling with mental health and things are kind of unsaid so um, a big one is a change in functioning so aka what they do in normal life and their kind of things are responsible for starts to be impacted. Wait, before you go into that, can we even back it up a step further to say when we're talking about mental health struggles, we're talking about depression, anxiety, anxiety bipolar disorder, OCD, ADHD, PTSD, mm -hmm. OCD. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Even like seasonal affect disorder. Yeah. Um, generalized anxiety disorder, any, any yeah. and all, and we're definitely missing some as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. Continue. So, um, how that would look in like functioning, impacting functioning is the things that they're maybe in charge of, or that they're kind of daily life, you'll see a change in that. So maybe they are, um, dropping some responsibilities. Maybe they're less focused at work or um, at home with you. With calling the kids, out of work, more calling frequently. out, um, kind of ducking plans with friends or family. Mm -hmm. um, maybe perseverating, meaning like hyper focusing and really worried about doing something that maybe you're not not that not normally they would be, but you're slowly seeing anxiety around that or a lot of fear around doing something that again starts to impact their functioning so it impacts their ability um, to go to the grocery store or to go hang out with friends or to work or communicate with you yeah. um, what do you think what does it kind of look like when maybe those mental health starts to pop up yeah i think absolutely right the functioning is the big key of how it shows up in life i think between the two of you mm -hmm. um more irritability yep. maybe bigger disconnect uh with your partner all of a sudden like things just feel tense or you're, you feel like your partner is just not really there for you in the way that they were before. Um, you could see a dip in your sex life, intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you might have to be picking up more kind of responsibilities or chores around the house. If there's kids involved, you might be feeling the brunt of parenting responsibilities. Um, yeah. And two things. One, you also may see substance use mm -hmm. um, kind of increase with someone that is maybe having mental health challenges and doesn't know it yet, yeah. or um, you both are kind of maybe hovering around that possibility, but like a reliance on um, smoking, drinking, vaping, um, you know, um, pills, things like that. Like we'll see an increase sometimes when um, the symptoms really start impacting, right? Like that daily life, that fun functioning. Mm -hmm. But it is also important to know that if you see some of these changes that Stacey and I are talking about as the partner that's not struggling, um, you also don't want to go into it with like this diagnostic tool because yes. sometimes stress can do a lot of these things. Yeah. Um, and that is something that we want to make sure we're having a conversation about, which leads us right into our next section, because you don't want to walk in with your partner and going, this is depression, yeah. or, you know what, I think you have OCD. Yeah. That's like, that's actually the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The biggest thing here, I think that we can encourage you to do if you're noticing any major changes and shifts yeah. in your partner is to get curious with them yeah. versus telling them what's going on for them and being like the end all know all of their experience and their mental health. Yeah. So 
it could literally just be calling out what your experience is. Hey, I'm feeling really disconnected from you lately. I've noticed you've been drinking more on the weekdays than you normally do and sleeping in a little bit later. Is everything okay? Versus I feel like you're really depressed. You don't talk to your family mm -hmm. anymore. You are absent with the kids yeah. um, and you don't even want to have sex. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. What's wrong with you? And then I'm yeah. leading, telling her, I think you're depressed versus um, the other way around that curiosity, like Stacy is saying, allows the partner to share with you what their depression looks like, what their anxiety might look like, what their phobia might look like. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they're depending on someone's background and beliefs, there is so much shame and stigma that can come with mental health struggles. So you know your partner best, but maybe there are parts of your partner that you have not gotten to see yet or are unsure about. So when it comes mm -hmm. to taking care of somebody's mental health, really um, being mindful, really being empathetic. And the way that we lead into those conversations is crucial for Huge. how they go. So if we're going with kind of how Rachel came out, what's wrong with you? Like you must be depressed, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're probably going to shut your partner down, which is going to lead to the opposite of what you're wanting. So yeah. if you are wanting to know what's going on with your partner and how to support them, leading into those conversations in a way that is going to help with that outcome um, is really, really important. So thinking of how you would want to be talked to on like your worst day um, yes. and bringing that one. into, into yeah. your relationship, you know, and meet them where they are at just because you think maybe um, that, you know, oh, you think it's depression or you think it's this. Um, don't just kind of like lead into that. Stacey's taking a picture of us right Sorry. now as we're doing this. Sorry. So it's just... about it. I was going to do a video, so just keep going. Um, and so really you can't, if you're telling your partner like what you think they have, you might be missing the mark. And that is something that's not going to encourage a larger conversation about mental health issues in a relationship. So you don't want to lead with, I think you're depressed. That example that Stacy had was great. I noticed this is going on. I noticed you're struggling with you with here is everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, because maybe it's depression and anxiety, maybe it's anxiety and OCD. Like you have no idea. And the important thing is to make sure your partner feels open to talking about it and not that it's something that you are going to fix in that moment because yes. it's causing you discomfort. Yeah. It's, it's stressing you out and absolutely. rightfully so. Yep. Absolutely. Let your partner be the expert on themselves Oof, um, yeah. and be, be the support system to them. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, boundaries around helping. Cause I think this is going to be, again, like Stacy said, this is a huge topic and can go to certain ways, but when you're the partner, that's not struggling, there's definitely some things we kind of want you to remember. Yeah, absolutely. Being, being the partner who is supporting someone or existing while they're figuring it out can be absolutely depleting, absolutely exhausting. Yeah. And so figuring out what those boundaries are for you to take care of yourself while they are going through their own experience is so important. Do you have support while your partner is taking care of themselves? Who are your trusted people that you can talk to about this? When do you know it's pushing you to a place that is not good, right? So, um, Maybe you start therapy yourself. You have your trusted circle of friends um, to take care of yourself. What are the activities you're engaging in that allow you to recharge, reset, um, so you don't become kind of sucked into the same like cycle or dynamic um, if your partner is not functioning at their same, mm. same level. I think there's gotta be a level of acceptance and that's why mm -hmm. all these um, kind of boundaries in place that Stacey listed are so important because you've got to take care of yourself while you are trying to support someone else. And especially if it's your partner in finding solutions or next steps in their mental health journey. But at a point you reach, and this is just really hard, I think for everyone when we're on this issue is that you can only support your partner as much as they want to be supported. Yeah. You can only help them as much as they are open to. That line does get really blurry when let's say a partner's like, I don't want you to tell anyone that I'm so, 
I'm dealing with depression. I don't want anyone to know that like I have my ADHD made me lose my job yeah. um, because then that's impacting you individually. So sometimes there can be conflict there. Um, if Stacey really feels like she needs to talk her family and friends and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so that can get blurry. But I think the other thing is it gets really hard when you are on two different sides about what needs to be done about yeah. the mental health issues. Yeah. I'm thinking particularly like if medication is not any intervention, really, even yeah. therapy, like what yeah. if you have a really depressed partner and um, I don't know, they just have a history with substance use. And so like maybe medication's not the first thing to go. And they're just like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to go to therapy. I'm fine. Yeah. And then they continue to medicate with like alcohol or weed. There's only so much you can do. And I think in those, in being aware of your boundaries, it's, yeah. it's not, how do I force my partner yes, to yeah. do what I think they should do. They need to be medicated. They need to be going to therapy. They need a support group, whatever it is. And they're resistant to that. Yeah. Okay. You can make your needs known, especially like if there's kids involved, yeah. if your partner's putting themselves in danger, like yeah. of course you have danger. to, yes, of course you have to try to keep everybody safe. But at what point do you say they're making this choice for themselves? How do I take care of me while they are doing whatever that process is? And look, sometimes that might mean space in yep. certain, yes. certain scenarios, but it could also be how do I work on, and again, this is where the, how do you take care of yourself, um, letting them be on their own journey and path, um, because this is their experience, um, while, you know, I'm, I'm taking care of me, yeah. right. The goal is not to force our partner to do anything. And I think the, the one thing that we hear a lot on this topic is, well, if I make room for myself or I advocate for myself, you know, I'm afraid of triggering their mental health. Um, even worse, mm -hmm. I'm worried about making it worse. And that is a reality. We are not glossing over that, but at the end of the day, you do have to choose um, how much to be supportive and then how much to take care of yourself. And that may ebb and flow, but you're not a bad person for setting those boundaries yeah. um, because we firmly believe that no one person is worth, and we don't mean that lightly, but like consuming um, things that are unhealthy for you and living a certain way. So we know it's hard. It's not so black and white. It's not yeah. like you yeah. leave or you stay kids, no kids. Yeah. Um, but you do have a right to get support and to let others help you in this journey while you are helping a partner that's struggling and whatever their choices may be, yeah. you don't have to do it alone. And sometimes I think it is worth maybe causing a little tension with your partner. Mm -hmm. If you need support, Absolutely. if this is a long-term process. Absolutely. Yep. So biggest takeaways are getting curious with what your partner's going through yes. and not being the expert on, on their own experience, as well as those boundaries of understanding what you're needing as a partner, partner supporting them. Um, how do you take care of yourself and how do you respect their decisions while they're navigating their own mental health? Yeah. And we will definitely pick up on this topic again. Absolutely. Thanks everybody.